السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلاب المرحلة الخامسة We will continue with Spondyloarthropathy Next in the group of this disorder is psoriatic arthritis As its name implies, it's associated with psoriasis A dermatological condition It is an inflammatory arthritis that is associated with psoriasis it was initially considered a variant of rheumatoid arthritis because the disease feature very similar to that of rheumatoid arthritis, but later on subsequently emerged as a distinct clinical entity. The onset is usually between 25 and 40 years of age. Men and women are equally affected. Psoriatic arthritis is present in approximately 15 to 20% only and patients with psoriasis. So, not all patients with psoriasis will have arthritis. Psoriasis most commonly precedes the onset of arthritis, but in some patients, the disease starts arthritis and later on, skin lesion will develop. How patients with psoriatic arthritis present? The, pre the presentation typical with pain and stiffness affecting the joint, tendon, spine, and Enthesis. Joints are typically not swell but painful, and there are several patterns of joint involvement in patients with psoriatic arthritis. These are important. Patients with psoriatic arthritis have five patterns of joint involvement. One, asymmetrical oligoarthritis of large joint of lower limb. Second pattern could present in a, in a picture similar to rheumatoid, so symmetrical polyarthritis. Third, disease with characteristic distal interpharyngeal joint arthritis. Psoriatic spondylitis, mainly affecting the axial skeleton. And finally, arthritis mutilence with complete destruction of the joint. So this is a hand of patient with psoriatic arthritis. We see there is involvement of multiple small joints. In rheumatoid arthritis, as you remember, we said distal interpharyngeal joint is a preserved. So involvement of distal interpharyngeal joint should exclude rheumatoid arthritis and make someone look for another diagnosis. In this patient, distal interpharyngeal joint involvement with typical nail change of patient with psoriasis make the diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis very likely. This is another example of distal interpharyngeal joint involvement in patients with psoriatic arthritis. This is the x-ray of the hand of patient with psoriatic arthritis and see distal interpharyngeal joint involvement and destruction of the articular surface. This should exclude rheumatoid arthritis as a possibility. Another patient, although small joint of the hand and some deformity of the hand typical to that of rheumatoid arthritis, but the nail chains and distal interphalangeal joint involvement make it psoriatic arthritis. In this patient, we see very severe deformed hands with complete destruction of several distal and proximal interphalangeal joint. This is called arthritis immutilence. Another feature, dactylitis, which is diffuse swelling of the joints, tendons, and or ligaments of all the digits, either of the fingers or toes, creating sausage-like appearance. This is dactylitis. usually occur in approximately 50% of patients with psoriatic arthritis. This is another example of dactylitis. Nail involvement such as nail pitting or onycholysis is common observed with distal interpharyngeal joint involvement. This is nail pitting. We see small bits over the nail. This is onycholysis or complete destruction and separation of the nail blade from the fingers.
diagnostic criteria, how we diagnose classification criteria for psoriatic arthritis or CASPA convey sensitivity and specificity of more than 90%. These include number one, inflammatory articular disease, which could be involvement of joints, spine, or emphasis, plus three of the following. Psoriasis, whether it is current, family history, or previous personal history. Number two, psoriatic nail change. Number three, negative rheumatoid factor. Number four, dactylitis, current or history. And finally, radio evidence of articular newborn formation. How we manage patient with psoriatic arthritis? The management of patient with psoriatic arthritis typically identical to that of rheumatoid arthritis. That is why we said early in the lecture, in this part, they state this disorder is identical. So, non-steroidal is sufficient to manage symptoms, only symptomatic relief. It is not disease-modifying agent. Methotrexate is drug of choice, similar to rheumatoid arthritis, and is also effective for skin disease. Other disease-modifying agents may also be helpful, including sulfasalazine, cyclosporine, and leflonamide. We need to note something important. Hydroxychloroquine generally should be avoided because it can cause exfoliative skin reaction or make psoriasis worse. So the only disease-modifying anti rheumatoid drug that should not be used in psoriasis is hydroxychloroquine. If patient is still symptomatic after the previous drug, then we start anti-tumor cross-factor treatment like infleximab, etanercept, or adalimumab. The third disease in this group is reactive arthritis. Reactive means arthritis occur as a reaction to something. Reactive arthritis. It is a reaction to infection or bacterial trigger with the clinical feature keep with all that of spondyloarthritis, meaning dactylitis, enthesitis, inflammatory pain, etc. Clinically is defined as arthritis that develop following infection and infection could be GIT infection or genitourinary infection. So it is arthritis that develop following infection where the organism cannot recover from the inflamed joint. Now the triggering organism include chlamydia, sexual transmitted disease, shigella, salmonella type immunia, salmonella enteritis, Yersinia enterocolitica, and Campylobacter. So the disease trigger or the infection can be divided into two groups, GIT infection or diarrheal illness and genitourinary infections which you present with urethritis. In patients with GIT infection, the male to female ratio is equal with no difference, but if the disease is genitourinary like in chlamydia or other sexually acquired reactive arthritis, is predominantly a disease of men with male predominance of 15 to 1. Clinical feature the active arthritis typically occur within 3 to 6 weeks after the triggering infection. The onset typically acute with inflammatory encystitis, arthritis, and axial involvement. Lower limb joints, especially large joints, characteristically affected. Low back pain and stiffness is common, and 15 to 20 percent of patients will develop sacroiliitis. Some patients will develop extra articular manifestation. These include serotonin balanitis, which is small vesicles on the coronal margin 
of the glass penis keratoderma dinorogica which is wax yellow brown vesiculopapular lesion with disequated margin on the palm and the sole of the feet conjunctivitis uveitis aortic valve regurg conduction defect peripheral neuropathy and up to 50% of active arthritis resolve with 6 months but 20% will go into chronic course how we investigate patient with reactive arthritis the diagnosis is usually made clinically but joint aspiration is required to exclude joint infection or crystal arthritis as is inflammatory disease ESR and C-reactive protein usually raise we need to look for the triggering infection by doing urine culture high vaginal swab culture and serology should be negative this includes rheumatoid factor antinuclear factor and antithrin-related peptide antibody management usually the disease responds well to rest and simple treatment with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs sometimes intra-articular injection of steroid is beneficial especially if single or small number of joints are involved but if disease is widespread or poor response to previous treatment systemic steroids sometimes needed there is no rule for antibiotics in the treatment of joint lesion treatment with disease modifying agents usually sulfasalazine or methotrexate should be considered for patients with persistent symptoms recurrent arthritis or severe keratoderma blinorogica if patient has failed response to all previous threats anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha should be tried last disease entity belong to this group is enteropathic arthritis meaning arthritis occur in patients with inflammatory bowel disease so involvement of peripheral joints is seen in about 20 percent of inflammatory bowel disease patients oligoarticular disease predominantly affecting large lower limb joints like knee ankle or hips any Crohn disease more than ulcerative disease the arthritis usually occur with the exacerbation of underlying inflammatory bowel disease and improvement of joint lesion occur with the improvement of the bowel disease management what's important to note is that non-steroidal should be absolutely avoided because it can exacerbate inflammatory bowel disease corticosteroid sulfasalazine methotrexate may be considered and they have role in treatment of both the joints and the bowel lesion finally anti-tumor necrosis factor is effective in enteropathic arthritis but etanercept should be avoided as it has no efficacy in inflammatory bowel disease